Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and this is a combined Get That C and Top Grade Top Up video on polymerization. This topic was suggested by Danny Alkafaji, Kieran, Becky Bentley, Rosina Aktha, Dami Bakare, Liam Boy 29, Adam Patel, Haynes McNeil, RJ Boy, Rachel Elvin, M Morris HD and Abdul. Thanks guys. If you've got a topic you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. The different exam boards all cover pretty much the same stuff for polymers, although they do break it up in slightly different ways. AQA is probably the strangest with this because they've got part of the polymer information in their C1 topic, and then they've got the other part of it in their C2 topic. But again, it's all pretty much the same stuff. There is some minor variation in what constitutes higher tier. Most of it is all foundation tier. There's odd little bits which show up on higher tier and that varies again from topic to topic. But I'm going to cover everything in this video. So let's start with the basics. Polymers are big molecules, but they're made from smaller molecules. And we call those molecules monomers. Here's ethene. And this is probably the simplest monomer that there is. You can think of this as being the one from which you can base all your other information on. Ethene's got this really interesting double bond in it, and we'll come back to that. I'll discuss uh, the family of molecules which ethene is a part of, the alkenes, in more detail in a later video. But for now, you just need to be aware that it's this double bond which makes ethene so important. Now, these small monomers, like ethene, they're small molecules, but they can join together to give much bigger, longer molecules, and those are what we call polymers. And the whole process is known as polymerization. And there are all sorts of different polymers. When you think of the sorts of materials which we typically refer to as plastics, those tend to be the polymers. In fact, the word plastic in science has a slightly different meaning. It talks about the behavior of a particular type of material. So let's stick with the phrase polymers. And pretty much anything that starts with the word poly, pretty much any compound, is some sort of polymer. So in addition to polythene and PVC, which is short for vo uh, polyvinyl chloride, there's also things like PTFE, which is polytetrafluoroethylene. There's loads and loads of different ones out there. But we're just going to focus particularly on what happens with this ethene and how we turn it into a much bigger molecule. As I say, the important thing about ethene is this double bond in it. And all monomers need that double bond in them for them to be able to be then polymerized. So watch what happens. When it's been polymerized, that double bond breaks open. And as it breaks open, you've now got two ends of two bonds which are looking for something else to join onto. Now when we do this reaction, we'll do the reaction with countless billions of ethene molecules and there'll be loads and loads and loads of them which have also had their double bond broken open in the same way. So our single ethene molecule, if it bumps into another ethene molecule, can then join onto it. It can form a new bond and we get a huge long chain of these ethene molecules all joining onto one another. And they form a compound called polyethene. The word poly just implies that there's more than one of these ethene monomers in a chain now. And actually we tend to shorten the word polyethene to polythene just because it's a little bit easier to say. Typically, we draw this long chain which can go on for thousands and thousands and thousands of carbon atoms. There can be lots of links in this chain. Typically, we'll draw this to show the structure of one link of the chain and only one link of the chain. And so we draw that like this. The brackets show that it continues on. And this N here shows that there can be any number of links in this chain but each individual link in a chain will have this structure. So that's what this represents. Let's just compare that again to our individual ethene monomer. So there's the ethene monomer, and there is the link in the polyethene polymer. And you can see that basically it's the same structure. The only difference is instead of the double bond between the two carbons, instead we've got a bond going out of each of these brackets. Now a quick note for those of you who are Scottish students only. 
You need to know a little bit more. This is addition polymerization, but there is another type of polymerization as well, known as condensation polymerization. It's almost exactly the same, but during the process, there's also a small molecule which will be lost from this chain. So it could be a water molecule or it could be a methanol molecule, something small and quite simple. That's the key difference between addition polymerization and condensation polymerization. For those of you in England and Wales, you don't need to worry about that though. So let's have a quick look at three more monomers and the polymers which they form. Firstly, if we start with a propene monomer like this one and it polymerizes, then we form polypropene. You can see that this is almost identical to when we formed polyethene from ethene. The only difference is in the place of one of those H's, there's a CH3 group now. So it's pretty much identical except for that CH3 group. Another one here is polytetrafluoroethylene or PTFE. And instead of the H's, you can see that we've got F's for fluorine atoms. Again, otherwise pretty much the same sort of thing. Finally, PVC, and again, you're starting to get the idea here, I expect, but we've got a chlorine atom on there instead of one of the hydrogens. Now, the key thing about these different types of polymer is that they have different properties. Uh, there's a few things which can affect the properties of polymers, and one of them is getting these different types of monomers forming the polymer. So, for example, with polypropene, with that extra group sticking off the side, it can make the chains of the polymers interact with each other slightly differently. The length of the chains is also important and the density of the polymer, how it's packed together. All of these things can affect the behavior of it. So for example, going back to our polyethene, there are two key types of polyethene. There's low density polyethene and high density polyethene. Low density polyethene is much more flexible High density polyethene is much more rigid. And the only key differences is how they're produced. All polymers tend to be produced at relatively high temperatures, a few hundred degrees, let's say. They tend to be produced under pressure and they've usually got a catalyst in there. But how you change these conditions affects the structure of the polymer which you make. You don't need to know any more detail than that. You just need to be aware that we can control the structure of the polymer by changing what monomers we start with and by changing the conditions in the reaction chamber itself. So now that we know how polymers are formed, in the next video, which you'll be able to see if you click just here, I'm going to cover how it is that we use polymers and one of the big problems that's associated with how we use polymers. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the snap quiz. The link is right here, and it'll also be in the description, along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.